Hey YouTube, welcome to the first episode of what will hopefully be a multi-part series of basic Unreal Engine 4 development with C++. In this first tutorial, we'll be adding some simple sprint functionality to the built-in third-person character in Unreal Engine. The goal here is to make the character transition from a running speed to a sprinting speed when the shift key is pressed. When the shift key gets released, we want the character to resume their normal running speed. Before we get started, here's a quick demo of what we're trying to implement. When the shift key gets pressed, my character runs faster, and when I let go of the shift key, he slows down. This is similar behavior to a lot of games like PlayerUnknown Battlegrounds. Also, if you're paying attention, you'll probably notice the character animation never updates when we begin sprinting. This is not covered in this tutorial, but we could cover it in a future video. To get started, I've loaded up Unreal Engine and I'll be creating a new project called Sprint Tut. This will be a C++ project using the third person character template. We'll go ahead and create this project and wait for the Unreal Editor and Visual Studio to load up. Jumping straight into Visual Studio, we'll open Source, Sprint, Tut, and load up the Sprint, Tut character header file. The first thing we're adding is a new class variable called Sprint Speed Multiplier. This will be a float representing how much faster we want the character to sprint versus run. We'll also add a new U property. This will tell Unreal to make the variable accessible in Blueprints. We also want to set it to read only and make the category character movement walking, which is where similar attributes live. While we're in this file, we'll also define two new method templates, one called sprint and another called stop sprinting. These will eventually contain the logic that makes the character move faster. Transitioning over to the sprint.character C++ file, we'll go ahead and start implementing some things. Starting off in the constructor, we'll go ahead and assign a value to the sprint speed multiplier. Here I've assigned it to 2, which is actually pretty fast, but it worked out well for the example because it was very clear the character was moving faster. Alright, now it's time to implement the sprint and stop sprinting methods. To do this, we'll use the getCharacterMovement function, which will retrieve a character movement component. This subobject contains a max walk speed variable, which we can actually change to make our character move faster or slower. To make our character sprint, we're just going to multiply the max walk speed by the sprint speed multiplier. And to reverse the effect and stop sprinting, we'll just divide it. So we'll call get character movement, get max walk speed, and multiply that by sprint speed multiplier. And we'll do the same thing in stop sprinting, but divide. And for our last code change, we'll hop over to our setup player input component method where we'll be telling Unreal to call our sprint method when the sprint key is pressed. We'll also tell Unreal to call our stop sprinting method on the same key, but instead we'll call it when the key is released. Congratulations, you've made it through all the code changes. The last thing we need to do is make our sprint event map to the shift key. To do this, I've gone to edit project settings and scroll down to the input menu option. From here, we'll hit the plus to add a new action mapping and we'll name it sprint to match our code. Finally, I've set this to left shift, but you can set it to whatever key you want. So from here, we'll just go ahead and save what we've changed and compile. I've gone ahead and sped this up in the interest of time, but it's probably going to take longer for you. From here, if you click on your character model and scroll down to the character movement walking section, you can see that our sprint speed is showing up here and it's set to two, just like I said it in my code. You'll notice you can't change the variable because we set it to read only, but you can still use it in your blueprints. From here, I'm going to click launch and speed up the execution process, but in a few minutes, we'll be able to see if everything worked out. All right, here I hold down the shift key and everything looks good. Thanks for watching. If you have any video ideas or tutorials you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to make them.